Welcome to Electro Online. Our next example again deals with a linear charge distribution, but in this case we're trying to find the electric field to the side of the distribution instead of along the length of the distribution. So the approach is a little bit different. What we do want to do is place the point where we want to find the electric field right at the midpoint of the line distribution. We can do it otherwise, we could put it somewhere else, but for now it's easier to do it like this. And then we'll see how we need to adapt it by putting it somewhere else. The reason why we want to put it right in the middle is because this component here will cancel out. All the additions of the charge distribution over here will cancel out in the horizontal direction with all the distribution of charge on this side. And so you only have to worry about the component that acts straight downward. So what we need to do is first define a small little dq, and that dq is equal to the linear charge density times a small dx. And then we're going to integrate all the way from zero to the end point, let's call that distance a away from the midpoint here. And notice that we also have to define this distance because after all, the dE is going to be equal to k times the charge dq divided by the distance. So we're talking about this distance right here and that is going to be equal to the square root of r squared plus x squared. Then we have to multiply that one times the cosine of theta, which by definition is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side r to the hypotenuse, which is the square root of r squared plus x squared. So that's where this comes from. And then when we combine the two and we pull out an r because that's constant, we then have, uh, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Now we're going to integrate that, so to find the total electric field at this point that's equal to twice the integral of the, of the contribution of a half side, so we're going to integrate from 0 to a and simply double that. So it's twice integrated from 0 to a times dE cosine of, of dE cosine theta, which is defined right here. Now notice that the 2 is a constant, k is a constant, lambda, the linear charge density is constant, and r is a constant. That's the distance away from the charge distribution. The only thing left is that we end up with the integral of dx over r squared plus x squared to the 3 halves power when we multiply this times this in the denominator. Now this is a very common integral in electromagnetism. Probably it's a good idea to simply memorize it. And so the integral of this is going to be x divided by r squared times the square root of r squared plus x squared. Now you say, well, where did you get that from? Well, I got it from an integral table. Or what you can do is you can take this and take the derivative of that and you'll end up with this again. So that means that you can very easily check to see why that is a integral of, uh, why this is the result of the integral of that. So once you have that, then you plug in the limits. Of course, when you plug in zero, you get zero. So only have to plug in the upper limit. So end up with this expression right here. So that's the electric field at some point from a linear charge density when the point is placed at the middle and the length of the charge density is from minus a to a and the distance away is r. So that's what we end up with. Now what happens when we let r, uh, not r, but a go to infinity? What if we have an infinite charge distribution, a very long length? Of course you say, well, what's the purpose of that? Because there's no such thing. But what that means is, let's say you have a long object that has charge on it and you're very relatively close to that. So when r becomes very small relative to a, then it acts as if it's a, an infinite charge distribution and then you can say when a approaches infinity, in other words, gets very big, this ratio becomes 1, and therefore this is then the electric field strength. Now notice it's only the magnitude, which is 2k times the charge density divided by r. Of course, depending upon the orientation of the charges, then you could put, turn that into a vector. In this case, it would be in the negative direction, in the negative y direction, so you can turn this into a vector quantity if you like. But that is how it's done. 